There's a certain look that's taken over everything. A certain color palette, kind of font, and design. Today, this visual style sells us meal kits, and underwear, and monthly toothbrush subscriptions, and just about everything else. But it's also showing up here, in seemingly harmless, trendy Instagram posts about child trafficking. On Instagram, there are over 800,000 posts like this, from social media influencers and regular users, with the hashtag SaveTheChildren. We've seen things like this before. Slideshows about social justice and current events dominated Instagram this summer. But something else is happening here. On Facebook, membership in pages and groups branded as anti-child trafficking grew 3,000% between July and the end of September. By the end of August, in-person rallies started taking place in cities across the world. Ending child trafficking is hardly controversial. But behind that surge in growth is the baseless conspiracy theory known as QAnon. Now, an ideology once confined to the more obscure parts of the internet is finding its way mainstream, one Instagram post at a time. On October 28th, 2017, the first of a series of posts from an anonymous user appeared on the 4chan message board, Paul. The user was nicknamed Q, after Q-level security clearance. That's the energy department equivalent of top secret. The community that followed and believed those anonymous postings became known as QAnon, and they developed an elaborate conspiracy theory lore that President Trump is fighting a global child trafficking network led by satanic cannibalistic left-wing pedophile elites. Their theories have been proven false time and time again, but that didn't stop the community from spreading, from 4chan to another messaging board 8chan, and to places like Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. And as it did, the posts, videos, and memes explaining its ideology became more accessible and digestible. Now, QAnon is a giant entanglement of conspiracy theories with dozens of offshoots that invites all different kinds of conspiratorial thinking into its fold. QAnon has always been a big tent conspiracy theory that invites people of different beliefs. And the thing is, because the QAnon narrative is so broad and sprawling, people can kind of enter it and pick out the, the things that they like the best. That paired with the Facebook algorithm, which uh, recommends like other groups that someone might be interested in, uh, that turns into a very uh, dangerous combination. A QAnon follower blocked the Hoover Dam with an armored vehicle. A far-right conspiracy theorist was planning a kidnapping in Douglas in July, County. July, a 24-year-old man was charged in the shooting death of a reputed mob boss. His attorneys argued he was motivated by QAnon. In 2019, the FBI labeled QAnon as a potential domestic terror threat after some QAnon followers started committing serious crimes in the real world. On Facebook, QAnon-related activity grew steadily for years without consequences. But then something changed. There is a lot of evidence that suggests that the pandemic had a big effect on the growth of QAnon. The, the uh, impact of people uh, spending a lot more time indoors and uh, being online a lot more, combined with the stress of the pandemic and the uncertainty of the future, uh, that was a toxic combination that pushed people into QAnon. In March, three leading QAnon Facebook groups saw their membership rise from under 50,000 to over 300,000. By August, an internal investigation at Facebook reviewed by NBC found that a number of QAnon groups and pages had more than 3 million followers. On August 19th, Facebook announced that it would be banning hundreds of QAnon pages and groups. And after that, traffic for QAnon phrases and hashtags fell. But membership in groups posing as anti-child trafficking groups exploded. And in those groups, users were still largely spreading QAnon content. QAnon followers had simply pivoted to a new hashtag to improve their image, one that was already being used for a fundraising campaign by a UK-based charity, Save the Children. I suppose for someone like me who's kind of been covering QAnon for the past number of years, like the past six months have kind of been, you know, it's kind of been like watching a tsunami in slow motion. Save the Children, is, as I say, it's a simple rebrand of QAnon. It's a very simple and effective message to bring the QAnon movement to a wider audience. Um, you know, who doesn't want to save children? It's hard to accurately trace how the Save the Children hashtag jumped from these QAnon Facebook groups to mainstream accounts on Instagram. But by July, high-profile accounts like model Helen Owen and the Real Housewives of Orange County's Kelly Dodd boosted the hashtag with inaccurate or misleading statistics. This coincided with the United Nations Human Trafficking Awareness Day. 
Other accounts put together slideshow-style infographics, like these. And these are all packaged up in very pretty posts that are, you know, essentially they're very easily digestible, especially to people that are not familiar with QAnon. They're, the colors are so, a lot softer. There's a lot of pastels and it's very pretty and nice. And and when, if you look at it without reading the words, you would think it would be just like just any other kind of uh, yoga inspired, um, you know, Instagram post. And so the move to Instagram kind of brought, you know, it, it brought QAnon to this kind of lifestyle influencer circle, really. And many of these influencers already, they already have very high followings and they already have a dedicated audience that will, you know, very much listen to what they have to say. Accounts that might otherwise be getting just a few hundred likes on posts found themselves getting tens of thousands of likes as soon as they started posting about Save the Children. A lot of people who get into QAnon, especially if they're struggling influencers, they notice that these QAnon themes, they're like an internet cheat code because they attract people who are very engaged. They spend a lot of time online. And if you start promoting QAnon themes, you start noticing that you're getting a lot more likes and shares, that could be a big incentive to keep doing it. Perhaps the most damaging part of the Save the Children movement is how inaccurate information is making it harder to fight actual trafficking. One of these most often cited statistics is that 800,000 children go missing every year in the US. That number comes from a 2002 survey that asked parents if they had reported their children as runaways sometime in the previous year. 797,500 said that they had, though 2019 FBI data puts that number closer to 421,000. Roughly half of those reports are related to custody disputes, and the rest mostly relate to runaways. But even then, that number refers to children who are reported missing by their parents, the vast majority of whom, over 99%, return home within hours or days. In that 2002 study, only 115 were considered stereotypical kidnappings. There's no reliable data on how many people are trafficked in the US each year, but stereotypical kidnappings aren't what trafficking usually looks like. Instead, it often takes the form of forced labor or wage theft, most commonly in agriculture, domestic work, or sex work. And the people most at risk are those already vulnerable, youth experiencing homelessness, in foster care or unstable housing, LGBTQ plus youth who have been kicked out of their homes, or migrant young people. Most people kind of have this idea in their head that it's, you know, children being lifted off the streets and been shipped overseas, you know, and, you know, all of that, that does happen. It doesn't happen at all to the extent that QAnon followers believe that it does. But the hysteria caused by distorted numbers has led to a deluge of calls and outreach from concerned QAnon followers, and it's overwhelming the organizations fighting actual child trafficking. And that's very damaging because it made it harder for people with real information about possible human trafficking victims to get through. And so we've seen this actually repeatedly, the ways in which the misinformation that this that this kind of save the children style of QAnon is uh, is promoting damages real efforts to actually help children. You won't find any searchable hashtags with typical QAnon language on Instagram anymore. But because Save the Children isn't an inherently harmful tagline, moderating it has proven particularly difficult. And tackling misinformation on Instagram can be harder than on Facebook, since it's harder to train an algorithm to recognize misleading text in slideshow images than it is to recognize text in Facebook posts or comments. The belief in QAnon definitely falls along a spectrum. I don't think you can say that everyone that was at a Save the Children rally believes that Hillary Clinton needs children. It's the hysteria. It's the hysteria that grows and grows and grows as you're going down that rabbit hole that could more than likely eventually lead to you thinking that Hillary Clinton needs children. QAnon has really struck on something clever in that people get confused in their own way and they fall down their own individual rabbit holes that, that uh, radicalize them according to their own personality type. There are now more than 20 candidates for Congress who have expressed support for QAnon. The real danger is that people don't need to believe, or even be aware of, the entirety of a conspiracy theory for it to start influencing their decisions.